No more amazement. Tell your prettiest heart there's no harm done. Oh, woe the day! No harm. And do nothing but in care of thee. Of thee, my dear one. Thee, my daughter. Tis time I should inform thee farther. Land thy hand and pluck my magic garment from me. So, lie there, my ark. I have with such provision in mine art so safely ordered that there is no soul, no, not so much perdition as a hair, but did to any creature in the vessel which thou heardst cry, which thou saw sink. Sit down, for thou must now no farther. You have often begun to tell me what I am, but stopped and left me to a bulbousing position, including stay, not yet. The hour is now come. Canst thou remember a time before you came on to the cell? I do not think thou canst. For then thou was not out three years old. Certainly, sir, I can. Tis far off and more like a dream than an assurance that my remembrance warrants. Had I not four or five of the ones that tended me? Thou hadst, and more, Miranda. But how is it that this lives in thy mind? If thou remember such ere thou camest here, how thou camest here thou mayest. But then I do not. Twelve years since, Miranda. Twelve years since thy father was the Duke of Nun and a prince of power. Sir, are not you my father? Thy mother was a piece of virtue, and she said, Thou wast my daughter, and thy father was Duke of Milan, and thou his only heir. Oh, the heavens! What foul play had we that we came from thence, or blessed must we did? Both, both, my girl, by foul play, as thou sayest, were we heaved thence, but blessedly hold hither. Oh, my heart bleeds to think of the teen I have turned you to, just from my remembrance. Please, you, father. My brother, and thy uncle, called Antonio, I pray thee mark me that a brother should be so perfidious. He who next to thyself of all the world I loved, and to him with the manage of my state, for at that time the liberal arts were all my study. Thus the government I cast upon my brother, and to my state grew stranger, being transported and wrapped in secret studies. My false uncle, having both the key of officer and office, set all hearts of the state to a tune pleased his ear. And in my, my false brother, brother awakened an evil nature. nature. He did believe he was indeed the duke. Me, poor man, my library was duked him large enough. The king of Naples, being an enemy to me inveterate, hears my brother's suit, which was he in lieu of the promises of homage, and I know not how much tribute, should presently extirpate me and mine out of the dukedom, and confer fair Milan, whereon a treacherous army levied one midnight, fated to the purpose that Antonio opened the gates of Milan, and in the dead of darkness, the ministers of a purpose hurried thence me and thy crying self. Lack for mercy, I not remembering how I cried then will cry him over again. In few, they hurried us aboard a bark, bore us some leagues to sea, for they prepared a rotten carcass of a boat, not rigged nor tackled, sail nor mast. The very rats instinctively had quitted. There they hoist us to cry to the sea that roared to us, to sigh to the winds whose pity, sighing back again. Just for loving wrong. Alack, what trouble was I then to you? Oh, a cherub of thou wast, that did preserve me. Thou didst smile, infused with fortitude from heaven, when I have decked the seas with drops full salt. How came we ashore? By providence divine, some food we had, and some fresh water, that our noble Neapolitan, Gonzalo, out of his charity, being then appointed master of this desire to give us, along with rich linens, garments, stuffs, and necessaries which since have said it much. So of his gentleness, knowing I love my books, he furnished me from mine own library, the volumes that I prize above my dukedom. But I might but ever meet that man. And now, sir, I pray you, for still to beating in my mind your reason for raising the sea storm. No of us far forth, by accident most strange, bountiful fortune now, my dear lady, half mine enemies brought to this shore, and by my prescience, I find my zenith doth depend upon a most auspicious star, whose influence, if now I court down for a bit, my fortunes will ever after droop. Here cease more questions. Thou art inclined to sleep. Tis a good dullness and give it way. I know thou canst not choose. Come away, servant, come. I am ready now. Approach, my Ariel, come. All hail, great master, great sir, hail! I come to answer thy best pleasure, than to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds thy strong bidding task. Ariel, and all his quality, 
Hast thou spirit, perform to point the tempest I be. To every article, I board the king's ship, now in the beak, now in the waist, the deck and in every cabin, I flamed amazement. Sometime I divide and burn in many places. The top mast, the yards, and the bow for what I hang to see. Then meet and join Jove's lightnings, the precursors of the dreadful thunder claps. More momentary and set funny than we're not. The fire and crafts of sulfurous roaring. The most mighty Neptune seemed to besiege and make his bold waves tremble. Yea, his dread trident shake. My brave spirit, who was so firm, so constant, that this coil would not infect his reason. Not a soul without the fever of the mad and plagued some tricks of desperation. All but mariners plunge upon the foaming brine and quit the vessel. Then, all the fire with me, the king's son, Ferdinand, with hair up staring them like reeds, not hair, was the first man that leaped, cried, Hell is empty, and all the devils are here! Why, that's my spirit. What was not this night shore? Close by the master. But are they aerial safe? Not a hair perished. On their sustained garments, not a blemish, but fresher than before. And, as thou bats me, in troops I have dispersed them about the isle. The king's son have I landed by himself, whom I left cooling of the air, with sighs in an odd angle of the isle, sitting with his arms in the sad knot. Of the king's ship? Safely in harbor is the king's ship, in the deep nook where once thou called me up to fetch dew from the still drugs from Eunice. There she hid. All mariners under hatches stowed, who, with a charm joined to their suffered labor, I have left to sleep. And for the rest of the fleet, which I have dispersed, they have all met again, and are upon the Mediterranean float, bound sadly home for Naples. Ariel, thy charge exactly is performed. But there's more work. What is the time of the day? Past the mid-season. At least two glasses. The time twixt six and now must by us both be spent most preciously. Is there more toil? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised and hast not yet performed me. How now, Moody? What is it thou canst demand? My liberty. Dost thou forget from her torment I did free thee? No. Thou dost, and thinks it much to tread the ooze of the salt deep, to run upon the sharp winds of the north, to do me business in the veins of the earth when it is still baked with frost. No, sir. Thou liest, malignant thing! Hast thou forgot the foul witch Sycorax? who with age and envy was going to a hoop. Hast thou forgot her? I do not, sir. Thou hast. Where was she born? Speak, tell me. Sir, in Algiers. Oh, was she so? I must once in a month recount what thou hast been which thou forgetst. This damned witch, Sycorax, thou knowest was banished. Is not this true? Aye, sir. This blue-eyed hag was hither brought with child, and here was left by the sailors. Thou my slave, as thou reports thyself, was then her servant, and for thou wast a spirit too delicate to act her earthly and abhorred commands, refusing her grant, as she did confine thee into a cloven pine within which rift imprisoned, thou didst painfully remain a dozen years within which space she died and left thee there, where thou didst vent thy groans as fast as middle wheels strike. Then was this island, save for the sun that she did litter here, a freckled whelp, hag born, not honor of the human shape. Yes, Caliban, her son. Dull thing, I say so, he that Caliban, who now I keep in service. Thou best knowest what a torment I did find thee in. Thy groans did make wolves howl, and pantry the breasts of ever angry bears. Twas a torment to lay upon the damned, and was my art when I arrived and heard thee, and made gape the pine and let thee out. I thank thee, master. If thou art murmurest, I will rent an oak, and peg thee in his naughty entrails, till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, master, I will be correspondent to command and do my spiriting gently. Do so, and for two days I shall discharge thee. That's my go, master. What shall I do? Say, what, what shall I do? Go, make thyself like an the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine, invisible to every eyeball else. Go, take this shape and hither come into it. Go, hence, with diligence. Awake, dear heart, awake. Thou hast slept well. Awake. The strangeness of your story put heaviness in me. Shake it off. Come on, was it Caliban, my slave? To the villain, sir. I do not love to look on. But as his we cannot miss him. He does make our fires, fetch in our wood, and serves in offices that profit us. What ho! Slave Caliban, thou earth thou! Speak! There's wood enough for them! Come forth, I say, there's other business for thee. 
Come, thou tortoise wen, thou poisonous slave got by the devil himself. Upon thy wicked dam, come forth. As wicked do as our my mother brushed with the raven's feather. From unwholesome fen, drop on you both and blister you all over. For this, be sure tonight thou shalt have cramps. Side stitches such a pen thy breath up. Urchins shall for that fast fight that they may work. All exercise on thee, thou shalt be pinched, thick as honeycomb, each pinch more stinging than bees that made up. I must eat my dinner. The isle's mine, my sycorax, my mother, which thou takest from me. When thou camest first, thou strokest me and made too much of me. Don't give me water with berries in it, and teach me how to name the bigger light, and what less that burn by day and night. But then I loved thee and showed thee all the qualities of the isle. Fresh springs, brine pits, barren place, and fertile. Cursed be that I did so! All the tribes of Sycorax, toads, beetles, bats laid on you! For I am all the subject that you have, but once as mine own king, and here you sty me on the Tartar rock! Well, do you keep from me the rest of the eye? Thou most lying slave, whom stripes they move not kindness. I have used thee filth as thou art, with humane care, and lodged thee in mine own cell till thou didst seek to violate the honor of my child. Oh, 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 what have been done? Born slave, which any print of goodness will not take, be incapable of all ill. I pity thee, took pains to make thee speak, taught thee each hour one thing or other, when thou didst not, savage, know thine own meaning, but would gather like a thing most brutish. I endowed thy purposes with words that made them known. Tell me language, am I provident? Is I know how to curse! Have seed hence! Fetch us in fuel and be quick. Thou art best to answer other business. Shrugs thou malice. If thou neglects or dost unwillingly, I command. I will rack thee with old cramps. Fill all thy bones with aches. Make thee roar that beasts shall tremble at thy day. No, pray thee, I must obey. His urges of such power. So slave, hence! On some god of the island. Sitting on a bank, weeping again, the king, my father's wreck, this music crept by me upon the waters, allaying both their fury and my passion with its sweet air. Thence I have followed it, or hath drawn me rather, but tis gone. No, it begins again. Full fathom five thy father lies. Of his bones are coral made. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Nothing of him that doth fade. But doth suffer us he change into something rich and strange. See nymphs hourly ring his knell. Ding dong. Hark, now I hear them. Ding dong bell. The ditty does remember my drowned father. This is no mortal business, nor no sound that the earth owes. The fringe curtains of thine eye advance, and say what thou seest yond. What is it? The spirit? Lord, how it looks about! Leave me, sir, it carries a brave form, but tis a spirit. No wench, it eats and sleeps, and hath such senses as we have such. This gallant which thou seest was in the wreck, and for he something stained with grief, that's beauty's canker. Thou mightst call him a goodly person. He hath lost his fellows, and strays about to find them. I might call him a thing divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. It goes on, I see, as my soul prompts it. Spirit, find spirit, I'll free thee within two days for this. Most sure, the goddess of whom these heirs attend, vouchsafe my prayer may no fear remain upon this island, and that you will some instruction give how I may bear me here. My prime request, 
which I do last pronounces. Oh, you wonder if you be maid or no? No wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. My language, heavens, I am the best of them that speak this speech. Were I but where tis spoken, how the best. What wert thou if the king of Naples heard thee? A single thing is I now that wonders to hear thee speak of Naples. He does hear me, and with that I weep, myself of Naples, who with mine eyes never since at ebb beheld the king my father wrecked. Black for mercy! Yes, faith, and all his lords, the Duke of Milan and his brave son being twain. The Duke of Milan and his more braver daughter could control thee if now put fit to do it. At the first sight they have changed eyes. Delicate Ariel, I'll set thee free for this. A word, good sir. I fear you have done yourself some wrong. A word. Why speaks my father so ungently? This is the third man that e'er I saw. The first that e'er I sighed for. Pity moved my father to be inclined my way. Soft, sir, one word more. They're both in either's powers. But this swift business I must uneasy make, lest too light winning the prize left. One word more. I charge thee that thou attend me. Let us hear you usurp the name thou owest not, and hast put thyself on this island as a spy to win it from me the Lord aunt. No, as I am a man. There's nothing ill can dwell in such a temple. Follow. <laughs> Speak not with you for him. He's a traitor. Come! I'll manacle thy neck and fit together. Sea water shalt thou drink. Thy food shall be the fresh brook mussels. Were there roots and husks were the acorn cradled? Follow. No. I will resist such entertainment till my enemy has more power. Oh, dear father, make not too rash a trial of him, for he's gentle and not fearful. Put thy sword up, traitor, who makest a show but darest not strike. Oh, come, for I can here disarm thee with this stick, and make thy weapon drop. You see, you, sir. Hence, hang on my garments. Sir, have pity, I'll be his surety. Silence. One word more shall make me chide thee, if not hate thee. What? An advocate for an impostor? Hush. Thou thinkest there is no more such shapes as he, having seen but him and Caliban. Foolish wench, to the most of men this is a Caliban, and they to him are angels. My affections are then most high. I have no ambition to meet a goodlier man. Come on, obey. Thy nerves are in their infancy again, and have no vigor in them. So they are. My spirits, as in a dream, are all bound up. The weakness which I feel, my father's loss, the wreck of all my friends, nor this man's threats, to whom I am subdued, are but like to me. Might I but through my prison once a day behold this maid, space enough have I in such a prison. Follow me. Thou hast done well, fine Ariel. Hark what thou else shalt do me. Be of comfort. My father's of a better nature, sir, than he appears by speech. This is unwanted which now came from him. Thou shalt be free as mountain winds, but then exactly do all points of thy command. To the syllable. Come, follow, speak not for him. Beseech you, sir, be merry, you have cause. So have we all of joy, for escape is much beyond our loss. Good sir, where is sorrow with our comfort? Prithee, peace. He receives comfort like cold porridge. Though this island seem to be desert, uninhabitable, and almost inaccessible, yet, yet, the air breathes upon us here most sweetly. As if it had lungs and rotten ones. Or a poor perfume by a fence. Here is everything advantageous to life. True. Say means to live. Of that there's none or little. How lush and lusty the grass looks. How green. The ground indeed is tawny. With an eye of green. He misses not much. No, he doth but mistake the truth totally. But, but the rarity of it is, which is indeed almost beyond credit, as many vouched rarities are, that our garments, being as they were, drenched in the sea, hold notwithstanding their freshness and glosses, being rather new dyed than stained with salt water. Methinks our garments are now as fresh as when we put them on first in Afrique at the marriage of the king's fair daughter Clarabelle to the king of Tunis. Twas a sweet marriage we prosper well on our return. Tunis was never graced before such a paragon to their queen. Sir, we were talking that our garments seem now as fresh as when we put them on first in every at the marriage of your daughter, who is now clean. It's not, sir, my garments as fresh as the first day I wore it. You crammed these words into my ears against the stomach of my sense. Would I have never buried my daughter there? For, coming hence, my son is lost, and in my rage she too, who is so far from Italy and moved, I ne'er again shall see her. O oh, thou, my 
my mayor of Naples and the villain, what strange fish hath made his meal on thee? Sir, you may live. I saw him beat the surges under him and ride upon their backs. And do not doubt he came alive to land. No, no, he's gone. Sir, you may thank yourself for this great loss, though not bless our Europe with your daughter, but let her lose her to an African. Pity, peace. You were kneeled to and importuned otherwise by all of us and the fair soul herself, where between lowness and obedience I would end of the beam should bow. We have lost your son, I fear, forever. Mill and the Naples know how more widows between them of this business is making than we bring men to comfort them. The, the false Jerome, so is the dearest of the law. My lord Sebastian, the truth you speak doth lack some gentleness, and time to speak it in. Throw up the sore when you should bring the plaster. This foul weather in us all, good sir, when you are cloudy. Had I plantation of this isle, my lord? He's so with nettlesome. For a dog or mallow. And if I were king on, what would I do? Escape being drunk for a want of wine. If the commonwealth, I would by contraries execute all things, for no kind of traffic would I admit. No name of magistrate, letters should not be known, riches, poverty, and use of service, none. Contract, succession, born, bound of land, tilt, vineyard, none. No use of metal, corn, wine, or oil, no occupation, all men idle, all. And women, too, but innocent and pure, no sovereignty. Yet he would be king on? The latter end of his commonwealth forgets the beginning. <laughs> All things in common nature should produce without sweat or endeavor. No marrying among his subjects? None man! All idle! Whores and knaves! I would with such perfection govern, sir, to excel the golden age! Oh God save his majesty! Oh, Gonzalo! Pretty, no more! Thou dost talk nothing to me! Sir, I do well believe that did it minister these gentlemen, who are of such sensible and nimble lungs that they always used to laugh at nothing. Cause you we laughed at. Who, in this kind of merry fooling, am nothing to you. So you may continue to laugh at nothing still. <sighs> what a blow was there given. Will you laugh me to sleep for? I am very heavy. I wish mine eyes would with themselves shut up my thoughts. Please you, sir, do not omit the heavy offer of it. It seldom visits sorrow, or when it doth it is a comforter. We too, my lord, will guard your person while you take your rest and watch your safety. Thank you. Wondrous <laughs> What strange drowsiness possesses them? Tis the quality of the climate. Why doth it not in our island sink? I find not myself disposed to sleep. Nor I. My spirits are nimble. They fell together all as by consent. They dropped as by a thunderstroke. Worthy Sebastian, methinks I see it in thy face what thou shouldst be. The occasion speaks thee, and my strong imagination sees a crown dropping upon my head. What art thou waking? Do you not hear me speak? I do, and surely it is a sleepy language that thou speakest out of the sleep. What is it thou didst say? This is a stranger post to be asleep with eyes wide open. Noble Sebastian, thou lets thy fortune sleep. Die, rather. Winks whilst thou art waking. Thou dost snore distinctly. I am more serious than my custom. You must be so too if heed me. Well, I am standing water. I'll teach you how to flow. Do so to ebb. Predatory sloth instructs me. Ebbing men indeed most often do so through the bottom rung by their own fear or sloth. Prithee, say on, the setting of thine eye and cheek proclaim a matter from thee and a birth indeed which throws thee much to yield. This, sir. Although this lord of weak remembrance, this who shall be of little memory when he is earthed, Hath here almost persuaded the king his son's alive, that he's undrowned. I have no hope that he's undrowned. Oh, out of that no hope, what great hope have you? Will you grant with me that Ferdinand is drowned? He's gone. Then, who's the next heir of Naples? Clarabelle. She that dwells in Tunis. She that dwells ten leagues beyond man's life. What stuff is this? Tis true, my brother's daughter is queen of Tunis. So is she heir of Naples. Twixt which regions there is some space. In a space, because every cubit seems to cry out, Clarabelle, keep in Tunis, and let Sebastian wait! <laughs> Saying this were death that now hath seized them, why, they were no worse than now they are. There be that can rule Naples as well as he that sleeps. 
Lord's like a crate of amply and unnecessarily, and this Gonzalo. Oh, if you bore the mind that I do. What a sleep is this for your advancement? Do you understand me? Methinks I do. Then how does your content tender your own good fortune? I remember, you did supplant your own brother Prospero. True. And look how well my garments sit upon me, much meaner than before. My brother's servants were then my fellows. Now they are my men. But, but for your conscience? Aye, sir. Where lies that? Here lies your brother, no better than the earth he lies upon. If he were that which now he's like, that's dead. And I, with my obedient steel, three inches of it, can lay the bed forever. And for all the rest, they take suggestions of cat lapped milk. They'll tell, the, they'll tell the clock to any business that we say befits the hour. Thy case, dear friend, shall be my precedent. As thou gotst mill in all come by Naples, draw thy sword. One stroke shall free thee from the tribute that thou payest, and I, the king, shall love thee. Draw together, and when I rear my hand, do you the like to fall it on Gonzalo. My master, he foresees the danger that you, his friend, are in, and sends me forth, for else his project dies to keep them living. While you hear this snoring lie, open eye conspiracy. Cause time doth take away, away! Then let us both be sudden. How now? Ho, oh, wait! Where are thou drawn? Wherefore are this ghastly looking? What's the matter? Well, we were here, securing your repose. Even now we heard a hollow burst of bellowing like bulls. Or rather lions, it's not wake you, so in your most terrible. I heard nothing. All to the den to fight a monster's ear, to make an earthquake. Sure is the roar of a whole herd of lions. Heard you this, Gonzalo? Upon my honor, sir, I heard a humming. There was a noise. Tis best we stand our guard, or that we draw our weapons. Let's quit this place. Cut this brown, and let's make further search for my poor side. Heavens, keep it from these beasts! Lead away. Prosper, my lord, shall know what I have done. So, king, go safely on to seek thy son. Make him by each meal a disease. His spirits hear me, and I needs must curse. Then nor pinch, break me with urchin shows, pitch me the mire, or lead me like a firebrand in the dark out of my way. Unless he bid him, but for every trifle they're set upon me. Sometimes, like apes that mow and shatter at me and have to bite me, then. Like hedgehogs, it's like tumbling at my barefoot way. A mouth of pricks at my footfall. Sometimes I am all wet with adders who hiss me and do madness. <laughs> the spirit of this and to torment me for bringing home wood too slowly, I'll fall flat. He has neither push nor shrub to bear off any weather at all. Need of the storm brewing, I hear it sing in the wind. If she thunder as it did before, I know not where to hide my head. Yon sand cloud cannot fall by pale fools. What have we here? A man or a fish? Dead or alive? A fish. He smells like a very old ancient fish like <laughs> smell. A strange fish. Were I in England now, as I once was, with this fish painted, not a whole day fool would give a piece of silver, for they will not give a door to the lame beggar. Think about ten to see a dead Indian. Leg like a man, and fins like arms. Warm like chalk, this is no fish, but an islander that has any sort of wild thunderbolt. Alas, the storm has come again. My best way is to shut under his gabardine. There is no other shelter hereabouts. Misery equates a male shame to bedfellows. I shall shut here till the storm be passed. Lord, to see, to see, here I shall die ashore. <laughs> this is a very scurvy tune to see a man's funeral. Well, here's my comfort. <laughs> the master, the swabber, the bosun, and I, the gunner and his mate, loved Mohammed, Marion, and Marjorie. But none of us cared for Kate. For she had a tongue with the tang, would cry to a sailor, go hang. She loved not the savor of tar nor pitch, yet a tailor might scratch her where she had hid it. Then the sea boys and let her go hang. 
Do not torment me! Oh. What's the matter? Is we devils here? Is this some monster in the aisle with four legs who hath got a day ticket and add you? Where the devil should he learn our language? I'll give him some really fit for that. If I can recover him and keep him tame, get to Naples with him, he's a present for any emperor that ever trod on these leather. Do not torment me, prithee. I'll bring my wood home faster. Since Fitnow does not talk after a while, this. I'll give him a taste of my bottle. If he had never drunk wine before, it'll go near to remove his fit. <laughs> It does me it, but little hurt. I want to nod, and I know it by. And I tremble it. Come on, your ways! Open your mouth! This is that don't give language! You can't open your mouth! Now, I should know this voice, uh, but he's drowned, and these are devils! Oh, the fat me! Four legs and two voices? A most delicate monster! <laughs> All the wine in my bottle will recover him, I shall help his out of you. Come, and man, I shall force him to die other mouth. Does that other mouth call me? Mercy, mercy, devil and no monster, I shall leave him. Stefano, it's that be Stefano. Touch me and speak to me. Be not afraid, thy good friend should kill him. Thou be Trinkio, come forth. I'll pull thee by the lesser legs. If any legs be Trinkio's legs, these are they. <laughs> Indeed, how came this thou to be a seeker's group captain? Can you bet Trinculos? I took it to be killed by a thunderstorm. Well, art thou not drowned, Stefano? I hope art thou not drowned. Is the storm overblown? I hid me under the dead moon cap's gabardine for fear of the storm. Stefano, oh Stefano, till you want to scheme. Prithee, really, do not turn me about. My stomach is not constant. <laughs> These be fun things. And if they be not sprites, let the grave gods and fair celestial liquors. I will kneel to him. How didst thou escapest? How camest hither? Swear upon this ball how thou camest hither. I escaped upon a butt of sack which a sailor sweep overboard. I swear upon that ball to be thy true subject, for that liquor is not earthly. Come, swear <laughs> then how thou escapest. So much like a duck, man. I can swim like a duck, I'll be sworn. Come, swear to that. Though thou art canceled like a duck, thou art made like a goose. Oh, Stefano, hast any more of this? The whole butt, man. My cellar's been rocked by a seaside where my wine is hidden. Huh. How now, Moocap, how thy neck? Hast thou not dropped from heaven? Out of the moon, I do assure thee, also the man the moon with time was. I have seen thee in her, and do adore thee. My mistress showed me thee, thy dog, and thy bush. <laughs> Come, swear to that. Kiss the book. I shall furnish it now with new content. <laughs> by this good light, a very shallow monster. I afraid of him, a very weak monster. The man in the moon? I'll show thee every fertile inch of the island. I'll kiss thy foot, prithee, be my god. By this lane, a most perfidious and drunken monster. When his god's asleep, he'll rob his box. I'll kiss thy foot, and swear myself thy subject. Come on then, down, swear. I shall laugh myself to death at this puppy headed monster. <laughs> I'll show thee the best springs. I'll pluck thee berries. I'll fish for thee. I'll get thee wood enough. A plague upon the tyrant that I serve. I'll bear him no more sticks, but follow thee. <laughs> the most ridiculous monster. To make a wonder for poor drunkard? I prithee, let me bring thee to where the crabs grow, and I with my long nails for to be pig nuts. Show thee a jay's nest. Wilt thou come with me? I prithee now, lead the way thou and more talking. Turn kill the king and all else being drowned, we inherit here. Here, bear my bottle. Farewell, master, farewell. Farewell. The howling monster? <laughs> a drunken monster. No more, damn. For fish, nor fish firing, requiring, nor straight drinker, nor watch fish, man, man, get down Some sports are painful and their labor delight in them sets off. 
some kinds of baseness are nobly undergone. This my mean task would be as heavy to be as odious, but the mistress whom I serve quickens what's dead and makes my labors pleasure. Oh, she is ten times more gentle than her father crash, and he has composed harshness. I must remove some thousands of these logs and pile them up. Alas, now pray you, work not so hard. I would the lightning had struck up these logs that you were enjoined to pile. Pray, set it down and rest you. When this burns, to weep for having married you. My father is hard at study. Pray, rest yourself. He's safe for these three hours. Oh, noble mistress, the sun will set before I shall discharge her. I must strive with you. If you'll sit down, I'll bear your logs the while. Pray, give me that. I'll carry it to the pile. Oh, pressed creature, I'd rather crack my sinews, break my back, than you should such dishonor undergo while I sit lazy by. It would become me as well as it does you, and I should do it with much more ease, for my will is to it, and yours is against. Oh, no, mistress, tis fresh morning with me when you are by at night. I do beseech you, chiefly that I may set in my prayers. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, my father, I have broken your head to say so. Admired Miranda, indeed the top of admiration, worth what's dearest to the world. Full many a lady I have eyed with best regard, many a time the harmony of their tongues hath in the bondage brought to my too diligent ear. For several virtues I have liked several women, but you, oh you, so perfect and so peerless, are created of every creature's best. I do not know what of my sex. No woman's face remember, save from my class, mine own. Nor have I seen more that they may call men than you, good friend, and my dear father. How features are abroad I am skillless of, but I would not wish any companion in the world but you, nor can imagination form a shape beside yourself to like of. But I prattle, something too wildly, and my father's precepts I therein do forget. I am in my condition a prince, Miranda. I do think a king. Oh, I would not so. Hear my soul speak. From the very instant that I saw you, did my heart fly to your service, and there resides to make me slave to it. And for your sake, I am this patient logman. Do you love me? O oh, heaven, O oh, earth, bear witness to this sound. I, beyond all limit of what else in the world, do love, prize, and honor you. I am a fool to weep, but what I am glad of. Wherefore weep you? And my unworthiness dare not offer what I desire to give, and much less take what I shall die to want. This is trifling, and all the more it seeks to hide itself the bigger bulk it shows. And special cunning, I am your wife if you will marry me. If not, I'll die your maid. My mistress dearest, and I thus humble ever. My husband then? I, with a heart as willing in bondage, your freedom, here is my hand. And mine with my heart in it. And now farewell, till half an hour hence. A thousand thousand. So glad of this as they I cannot be, who are surprised with all. Out to my books, for yet your supper time must I perform much business appertaining. Tell not me when the fight is out we'll drink water, not a drop of corn. So therefore bear up and board up. Serve him, Marshal, the folly of the silent. This is the five upon the we are free of them. If the others be bred like us, the state taunters. Drink, servant monster, when I bid thee. You are a very brave monster indeed. Mooncalf, speak once in thy life, if thou beest a good mooncalf. How does thy honor? Let me lick thy shoe. I'll not serve him. He's not valiant. Will that <laughs> debauch fish tell a monstrous lie? Lo, how he mocks me. Wilt thou let him, my lord? Drink you. Keep a good tongue in your head. You prove a mute near the next tree. Poor monster be my subject, and shall not suffer a dignity. <laughs> I thank the noble lord. Wilt thou be pleased to hearken once again at the suit I made to thee? Mary, will I kneel and repeat it? I shall stand, and so shall Trinculo. As I told thee before, I am subject to a tyrant, a sorcerer, who by his cunning has cheated me out of the isle. Thou liest, thou jesting fool, thou. I would my valiant master would destroy thee. I do not lie. Drink you. Trouble the monster any more in scale by this hand or shall supply it from your teeth. Why? I said nothing. One then, no more. Proceed. I say by sorcery he's got the style. From me, he got it. If thy greatness will revenge it upon him. 
for I know thou darest. But this thing dare not! That's most certain. Thou shalt be the lord of it, and I'll serve thee. How now canst this be compassed? Canst thou bring me to thy party? Yea, yea, my lord, I'll yield him thee asleep. Then thou mayst not a nail into his bead. Thou liest, thou canst not. What pot then is this thou scurvy patch? <laughs> I do beseech thy greatness. Give him blows. Rob the bottle from him. There he shall drink not but brine, for I'll let show him where the quick freshes are. Drink your running in no further danger. Interrupt the monster one word further. By this hand I shall knock my mercy out of doors and make a stockfish of thee. Why? I said nothing. I'll go farther off. Didst thou not say lie? Thou liest. Do I so? Take there that. Ah! As you like it, give me the lie one more time. I did not give the lie. I knew what's in Ram too. A pop your bottle. This is what sack and drinking can do. <laughs> with him the afternoon to sleep. There thou mayst bring him, having first seized his books with a log, batter his skull, or botch him with a stake, or cut his wizen with thy knife. Remember first to seize his books, for without them he is but a soft as I am. Or hath he but one spirit to command him, thou do hate him as rudely as I. Burn but his books, but what most deeply to consider is the beauty of his daughter. He himself calls her non pearl. I've never seen a woman, only Sycorax my damn she. But she far surpassed Sycorax as great does least. Is it so brave, alas? Aye, Lord. Monster? I will kill us, man. His daughter and I shall be king and queen, save our graces, and Trinkyog and thyself shall be viceroys. Dost thou like the plot, Trinkyog? Excellent. Give me thy <laughs> hand, I'm sorry I'll be. Within this half hour, he'll be asleep. Would that destroy him then? Aye, on mine honor. This is what I tell my master. That makes me merry. I am filled with pleasure. Let us be joking. I will troll the catch. At thy request. You but well, eh? At thy request, monster, I'll do reason, any reason. Come drink your wine and sing. Flout em, scout em, scout em, flout em. Thought is free. That's not the tune. <laughs> this is the tune of our catch, played by a picture of nobody. Thou beast of man, show thyself in thy likeness. If thou beast of devil, take that thou lay. I will forgive my sins. He that dies pays all debts. I defy thee, mercy upon us. Art thou afeard? No, monster, not I. <laughs> <laughs> Be not afeard. The isle is full of noises, sounds of sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Sometime a thousand twanging instruments will hum about mine ears, and sometime voices that, if I waked after long sleep, would make me sleep again. And then, in dreaming, the clouds me thoughts would open and show riches ready to drop upon me that, when I waked, I cried to dream again. It shall prove to be a brave kingdom where I shall have my music for nothing. Good prosperous. That shall be by and by. I remember the plot. Plead monster will fall. Forgo the purpose that you have resolved to effect. The next opportunity we will take thoroughly. Let it be tonight, for now that they are oppressed as travel, they will not, nor cannot use such vigilance as when they are fresh. I say tonight, no more. You are three men of sin, whom destiny that hath to instrument this lower world and what isn't, the never survived sea hath caused a belt up you, and on this island where man doth not inhabit, you amongst men being most unfit to live. I have made you mad! And even with such like valor, men hang and drown their proper selves. You fools! I and my foe are ministers of fate. The, the elements, elements of whom your swords are tempered may as well boom in the heavens. Or if we mock and stab, kill the still closing waters as diminished one doubt in my food. My fellow ministers. 
sisters are like invulnerable. And if you could hurt, your swords are now too massy for your strength and will not be uplifted. But remember, for that is my business to you, that you three from Milan to plant your Prospero, expose unto the sea which hath to put it, him and his innocent child, for which foul deed the powers delay, not forgetting, having sent to seas and shores. Yea, Yay. all creatures against, against your peace. peace. Holy sir, why stand you in this strange stare? Oh, it's monstrous, monstrous! Methought the billow spoke and told me of it, and the thunder, that deep and dreadful organ pipe pronounced, that I have prospered the base by trespass. Therefore, my son, in the ewe's life, that it, and all sink deeper than there, the planet sounded, and with him there lie mudded. But when fiend in time, I'll fight their legion's arm. Times after, now against to bite the spirits. I do beseech you that are of suppler joints, follow them swiftly and hinder them from what this ecstasy may now provoke them to. Follow, I pray you. Brave be the figure of this harpy, hast thou performed, my Ariel, my high charmed work, and these mine enemies are all knit up in their distractions. They now are in my power, and in these fits I leave them while I visit young Ferdinand, whom they suppose is drowned, and his and mine love darling. If I have too austerely punished you, your compensation makes amends, for I have given you here a third of mine own life, or that for which I live, who once again I tender to thy hand. All thy vexations were but my trials of thy love, and thou hast strangely stood the test. Here, afore heaven, I ratify this my rich gift. O oh, Ferdinand, do not cry at me that I boast her off, for thou shalt find she will outstrip all praise and make it halt behind her. I do believe it, against nor. Then, as my gift and thine own acquisition, worthily purchased, take my daughter. As I hope for quiet days, fair issue, and long life, with such love as tis now, the murkiest end, the most opportune place, the strong suggestion, our worst or genius can, shall never melt mine honor. Fairly spoke. Sit then and talk with her. She is thine own. What, Ariel, my industry servant Ariel? What would I put, master? Here I am. Thou and thy meaner fellow, your last service, did worthily perform, and I must use you in such another trick. Go bring the rabble, or whom I give thee power, here to this place, and cite them to quick motion. For I must bestow upon the eyes of this young couple some vanity of my own. It is my promise, and they expect it from me. Presently. I with a twink. Look thou, be true. Do not give dalliance too much the rain. The strongest oaths are straw to the fire of the blood. Be more abstemious, or else the night your vow. Now come, my Ariel, bring a corollary. Rather than want a spirit, appear in <coughs> No tongue, all eyes, be silent. And some donation freely to a state on the blessed lovers. Go with me to bless this twain, that they may prosper, be and honored in their issue. Honor, riches, marriage, blessings, long continuance, and increasing. Our only joys be still upon you. Spirit, Spirit send these blessings on you. you. This is the most majestic vision and harmoniously charming. May it be bold to think these spirits? Spirits, which by my art I have from their confines called to enact my present fancies. Let me live here ever, so rare wondered father and wife makes this place paradise. I had forgot the foul conspiracy of the beast Caliban and his confederates against my life. The minute of their plot is almost come. This is strange. Your father's in some passion that works you so strong. You do look, my son, in a moving sort, as if you were dismayed. Be cheerful, sir. Our revels now are ended. These our actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits, and are melted into air, into thin air. And, like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, 
Ye all which it inherit shall dissolve, and like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. Sir, I am vexed. Bear with my weakness. My old brain is troubled. Be not disturbed with my infirmity. If you be pleased, retire into my cell, and there repose. A turn or two a walk, to still my beating mind. We wish, wish your peace. peace. Come, with the thought I thank thee, Ariel, come. Thy thoughts I cleave to, what's thy pleasure? Spirit, we must prepare to meet with Caliban. Say again, where didst thou leave these varlets? I told you, sir, they were red hot with drinking. So full of valor that they smote the air for breathing in their pieces, beat the ground for kissing of their feet, yet always bending towards their project. Then I charmed their ears, and calf-like, they, my charming, followed through toothed briars, sharp furzes, prickling goss and thorns which entered their frail shins. At last, I left them in the filthy man's pool beyond your cell. Their dancing of the chains at the foul leg or stunk their feet. This was well done, my bird. Thy shape invisible retain thou still. The trumpery in my house, go bring it hither. Or sail to catch these thieves. I'll catch them. A devil, a born devil, on whose nature nurture can never stick. On whom my pains, humanely taken, all, all lost. And as with age his body uglier grows, so his mind cankers. I will plague them all, even to roaring. softly so that the blind mole may not hear a footfall. We are near his cell. Monster, your fairy, which you say is a harmless fairy, has done little better than play the jack with us. Good, my lord, give me the favor still. Be patient for the prize. All Burnley shall hoodwink this mischance. Therefore, speak softly. All is hushed as midnight yet. Oh, what's a lives are brought to us in the pool? No, a disgrace and dishonor in that monster, but an infinite loss. <laughs> Pretty, my king, be quiet. See, stop here. This is the mouth of the cell. No noise and enter. Do that good mischief which will make this island thine own forever. Give me thy hand. I do begin now bloody thoughts. Oh, Stefano. Oh, here. Oh, where is thee, Stefano? Look what a wardrobe there is for thee. Let it alone, thou fool. It is but trash. Oh, ho, Moss. We know it belongs to a frippery. Drink you. Put off that gown. By this hand, I shall have that gown. What do you mean to dote on such luggage? Let it alone. Do the murder first. We shall lose our time. From toe to crown, we'll fill our skins with pinches. Here's garments for thee. I'll have none on. We shall lose our time. And I'll be turned to barnacles. Help to bear us away to where my hog's head of wine is, or I'll turn you out of my kingdom. Go to, carry this. Mm. And this. I am this. Oh! Oh! and more pinch spot it make them than hard or cat mountain Hark, they roar! Ah! Let them be hunted soundly. At this hour, lie at my mercy all mine enemies. Shortly shall all my labors end, and thou shalt have the air at freedom. For a little follow, and do me service. Now does my project gather to a head. My charms crack not, my spirits obey, and time goes upright with his carriage. How's the day? At the sixth hour. At which time, my lord, you said our work should cease. I did say so when first I raised the tempest. Say, my spirit, how fares the king and his followers? Confined together, in the same fashion as you gave in charge. 
just as you left them. All prisoners, sir, in the lime grove which weather fends yourself. They cannot budge till your release. The king, his brother, and yours abide all three distracted, the remainder mourning over them, brimful of sorrow and dismay. But chiefly, him that you term, sir, the good old Lord Gonzalo. His tears run down his beard like winter's drops from eaves of reeds. Your charm so strongly works them that if you now beheld them, your affections would become tender too. Dost thou think so, spirit? Mine would, sir, were I human. And mine shall. Hast thou which art but air, a touch, a feeling of their afflictions, and shall not myself, one of their kind, that relish all I sharply, passion as they, be kinder removed than thou art? Though with their high wrongs I am struck to the quick, yet with my nobler reason against my fury do I take part. The rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance. They, being penitent, the sole drift of my purpose doth extend not a frown further. Go release them, Ariel, my charms I'll break, their senses I'll restore, and they shall be themselves. I'll fetch them, sir. Ye elves of hills, brooks, standing lakes, and groves, and ye that on the sands with printless foot do chase the ebbing Neptune, and do fly him when he comes back. You demi-devils that by moonshine through the green sour ringlets make, or of the ew not vice, and you whose pastime is to make midnight mushrooms, that rejoice to hear the solemn curfew, by whose aid, weak masters though ye be, I have bedimmed the noontide sun, call forth the mutinous winds, and twixt the green seas and the azure boat, set roaring war. To the dread rattling thunder have I given fire, and rifted Jove's stout oak with his own boat. The strong base promontory have I made shake, and by the spurs plucked up the pine and cedar. Graves at my command have waked their sleepers, oaked and led them forth by my so potent art. But this rough magic I hear abjure, and when I have required some heavenly music, which even now I do, to work my end upon their senses that this airy charm is for, I'll break my staff, bury it certain fathoms in the earth, and deeper than did ever come it sound, I'll drown my book. A solemn air and the best comforter to an unsettled fancy cure thy brain, now useless, boiled within thy skull. There stand for your spouse. Holy Gonzalo, O oh good Gonzalo, my true preserver, and a loyal sir to him you follow. I will pay thy graces home both in word and deed. Most cruelly didst thou, Alonzo, use me and my daughter. Thy brother was a further in the act. Thou art pinched for it now, Sebastian. Flesh and blood, you, brother mine, that entertained ambition, expelled remorse in nature, who, with Sebastian, would here have killed your king. I do forgive thee, a natural though thou art. Their understanding begins to swell, and the approaching tide will shortly fill the reasonable shore that now lies foul and muddy. Not one of them that yet looks on me or would know me. I will disgrace me, and myself present as I was sometime villain. Quickly, spirit, thou shalt alone be free. Where the beast lurks there, suck I, in a cowslip spell I lie. There are cups when owls do cry, on the bat's back I do fly. After summer, fairly round will I live now, under the blossom that hangs on the bough. Why, that's my dainty area. I shall miss thee, but yet thou shalt have freedom. So, so, so. Behold, torment, trouble, wonder, and amazement inhabits here. Is some heavenly power guide us out of this fearful country? Behold, Sir King, the wrong Duke of Millen, Prospero. For more assurance that a living prince does now speak to thee, I embrace thy body, and to thee and thy company, I bid a hearty welcome. Whether thou be he or no, or some enchanted trifle to abuse me, thy dukedom I resign and do entreat. Thou pardon me my wrongs, but how should Prospero be living and be here? Of course, noble friend, let me embrace thine age, whose honor cannot be measured or confined. Whether the spear be not, I'll not swear. You do yet taste some subtleties of the isle that will not let you believe things certain. Welcome, my friends all, but you, my brace of lords, were I so minded, I here could pluck his highnesses frown upon you and justify you traitors. 
At this time, I will tell no tales. The devil speaks in me. No! For you, most wicked sir, whom to call brother would even infect my mouth. I do forgive thy rankest fault, all of them, and require my dukedom of thee, which, perforce I know, thou must restore. If thou be Prospero, give us particulars of thy preservation, how thou hast met us here, who, three hours since, were wrecked upon these shores where I have lost. How sharp the point of remembrance is, my dear son Ferdinand. I am wolf for it, sir. Irreparable loss. For the like loss, I rest my self-content. You, like loss. As great to me as late, for I have lost my daughter. Daughter, oh heavens, that they were living both in Naples, the king and queen there, that they were. I wish myself were muddy in that oozy bed where my son lies. When did you lose your daughter? In this last tempest. Welcome, sir. This cell is my home. Here have I few attendants and subject none abroad. For you, look in. For my dukedom, since you have given me again, I will report you with as good a thing. At least, bring forth a wonder to content ye as much as me, my dukedom. Sweet lord, you play me false. No, my dearest love, I'm not for the world. Yes, for a score of kingdoms you should wrangle, and I would call it fair play. If this crew a vision of the island, one dear son shall I twice lose. A most high miracle. Though the seas threaten. <laughs> Though the seas threaten, they are merciful, and I have cursed them without a cause. Let all the blessings of glad father compass thee about. Arise, say how thou camest here. Oh, wonder, how many goodly creatures are there here? How beauteous mankind is! Oh, brave new world that has such people in it! It is new to thee. What is this maid with whom thou wast to play? Your eldest acquaintance did not yet be three hours. Is she the goddess that hath severed us and brought us thus together? Sir, she is mortal, and by immortal providence she is mine. She is daughter to this famed Duke of Milan, to whom I have received a second life and second father this lady makes him to me. And I am hurt, but oh, how all the will sound, but I must ask my child forgiveness. There! Sir, stop! Let us not burden our remembrance with the heaviness that's gone. I have feelingly wept, or should have spoken ere this. Look down, you God, and on this couple drop a blessed crown. Was Milan thrust from Milan that his issue should become kings of Naples? Oh, rejoice beyond a common joy and set this down with gold on lasting pillars. Give me your hand. Let grief and sorrow still embrace his heart that doth not wish you joy. Be it so. Amen. Sir, was this work well done? These are not natural events. They threaten the strange stranger. Was it well done? Bravely, my diligence, thou shalt be free. Come hither, spirit, set Caliban and his companions free. Untie the spell. There are yet missing of your company, so if you are glad that you remember not. Courage, you old bully boy, your courage! These me spies that wear my head, here's a goodly sight. Oh, Cerebus, these are brave spirits indeed. How fine my master is. I am afraid he will chastise me. Mark? But the badges of these men, my lord, these three have robbed me, and this demi-devil, for he's a bastard one, has plotted with them to take my life. Two of these fellows, you must know and know This thing of darkness, acknowledge my I shall be pinched to death. Is this not Stefano, my drunken butler? If he is drunk now, where had he wine? Particular reeling right. Where found they this grand liquor that hath gilded them? How camest thou into this pickle? I have been such a pickle since I've seen you last. I fear me, well, out of my bones. Why, well, how now, Stefano? Touch me not. I'm not Stefano, but a crank. You be king of the isle, Sira? I'd be a sore one, then. This is as strange a sight as e'er I looked on. He is as disproportioned in his manner as in his shape. Go, Sira, to myself. Take with you your companions. As you look to have my pardon, trim it handsomely. I, that I will, and I'll be wise hereafter. What a thrice double ass was I to take this drunkard <laughs> and worship this dull fool. Go no, to! Away! <laughs> Sir, I invite your highness and your train to my poor cell, where you shall take your rest for this one night. And in the morn I'll bring you to your ship, and so to Naples. Where I have hoped to see the 
the nuptial of these our dear beloved solemnized, and thence retire me to my millet, where every third thought shall be my grave. I long to hear the story of your life, which must take the ear strangely. I'll deliver all, and promise you calm seas, auspicious gales, and sails so expeditious that shall catch our royal fleet far off. Well, and this bare island by your spell. But release me from my bands with the help of your good hands. Gentle breath of yours my sails must fill, or else my project fails, which was to please. Now I want spirits to enforce, art to enchant, and my end is despair, unless I be relieved by prayer, which pierces so that it assaults mercy itself and frees all faults. As you from crimes would pardon me, let your indulgence set me free. 